Good morning and welcome to John's Memorial on this seventh Sunday after the Epiphany. For those of you who are watching online, you can find a bulletin um, online or go to bcponline.org. Again, welcome. Our opening hymn is 390. The service continues on page 355 of the Book of Common Prayer. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O oh Lord, you have taught us that without love, whatever we do is worth nothing. Send your Holy Spirit and pour into our hearts your greatest gift, which is love, the true bond of peace and of all virtue, without which whoever lives is accounted dead before you. 
Grant this for the sake of your only Son, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. A lesson from the book of Genesis. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? But his brothers could not answer him. So dismayed were they at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, Come closer to me. And they came closer. He said, I am your brother, Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves, because you sold me here. For God sent me to you to preserve life. For the famine has been in the land for these two years, and there are five more years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. God sent me before you to preserve you a remnant on earth and to keep alive for you many survivors. So it was not you who sent me here, but God. He has made me a father to Pharaoh and Lord of all his house and ruler over the land of Egypt. Hurry and go up to my father and say to him, thus says your son Joseph, God has made me Lord of all Egypt. Come down to me, do not delay. You shall settle in the land of Goshen and you shall be near me. You and your children and your children's children as well as your flocks, your herds and all that you have. I will provide for you there since there are five more years of famine to come, so that you and your household and all that you have will not come to poverty. And he kissed all his brothers and wept upon them. And after that, his brothers talked with him. The word of the Lord. Be to God. Please read responsibly by whole verse. Do not fret yourself because of evildoers. Do not be jealous of those who do wrong. For they shall soon wither like the grass, and like the green grass fade away. Put your trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on its riches. Take delight in the Lord, and he shall give you your heart's desire. Commit your way to the Lord and put your trust in him, and he will bring it to pass. He will make your righteousness as clear as the light, and your trust in him as the new day. Be still before the Lord, and wait patiently for him. Do not fret yourself over the one who prospers, the one who succeeds in evil schemes. Refrain from anger, leave rage alone. Do not fret yourself, it leads only to evil. For evil doers shall be cut off, but those who wait upon the Lord shall possess the land. In a little while the wicked shall be no more, you shall search out their place, for they will not be there. But the Lord shall possess the land, and they will be like in the of peace. But deliverance of the righteous comes from the Lord. He is the stronghold in time of trouble. The Lord will help them and rescue them. He will rescue them, the wicked will deliver them, because they seek refuge in him. The second lesson from 1 Corinthians. Some will ask, how are the dead raised? With what kind of body do they come? Fool, what you sow does not come to life unless it dies. And as for, you, for what you sow, you do not sow the body that is to be, but a bare seed, perhaps a wheat or of some other grain. But God gives it a body as he has chosen, and to each kind of seed its own body. So it is with the resurrection of the dead. What is sown is perishable. What is raised is imperishable. It is sown in dishonor. It is raised in glory. It is sown in wickedness. It is raised in power. It is sown a physical body. It is raised a spiritual body. If there is a physical body, there is also a spiritual body. Thus it is written, the first man, Adam, became a living being. The last Adam became a living, life-giving spirit. But it is not the spiritual that comes first, but the physical, and then the spiritual. The first man was from earth, a man of dust. The second man is from heaven. As was the man of dust, so are those who are, are of the dust. And as the man of heaven, so are those who are of heaven. Just as we have borne the image of man of dust, we will also bear the image of the man of heaven. What I'm saying, brothers and sisters, is this, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, 
nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Jesus said, I say to you that listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you, and if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. If you love those who love you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners love those who love them. If you do good to those who do good to you, what credit is that to you? For even sinners do the same. If you lend to those from whom you hope to receive, what credit is that to you? Even sinners lend to sinners to receive as much gain. But love your enemies, do good, and lend, expecting nothing in return. Your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High. For he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Do not judge, and you will not be judged. Do not condemn, and you will not be condemned. Forgive, and you will be forgiven. Give, and it will be given to you. A good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be put into your lap. For the measure you give will, the measure, will be the measure you get back. The Gospel of the Lord. These lections are very challenging for us. Love your enemies, do good and lend, expecting nothing in return. But Jesus does not expect these practices to be self-defeating because he also says, forgive and you will be forgiven. Give and it will be given to you. For the measure you give will be the measure you get back. It's hard for us to imagine how Jesus would respond to a vastly larger worldview with much more wealth and yet also abject poverty, with almost 200 countries, 6,500 spoken languages, and 4,200 religions, according to a quick Google search. There's also fake news, alternate facts, and many explanations and theories that do not agree and human knowledge is rapidly changing, not only by exponential addition, but also by strong evidence things formerly regarded as true are indeed false or partially false. I read recently that the sum total of available medical knowledge is doubling every five years now. 
How would Jesus adjust his teachings to our far larger worldview? One thing I feel confident Jesus would do is dialogue with his Abba, his Father, God. And that would enlarge his perspective beyond his day-to-day life and even beyond his limited knowledge during his earthly lifetime. He would wonder, including wondering why others have a different perspective. As Reverend Martin Smith wrote in Sojourners in 2019, this week we go right to the core of the ethics of the reign of God, the onset of God's future, learning from Jesus what it means to live under the authority of God, not the mores of the past. In one sense, we are all children of God already, just by being human and being born with the stamp of the image and likeness of God in our personhood. But in another sense, we must become God's offspring to authenticate our right to this identity by demonstrating the family likeness and character in action. In today's gospel passage, we are urged to be children of God by working, so to speak, in the family business. The Holy One's family business is reconciliation, risky solidarity, and love that is unconditional and generous, a business that is indifferent to profit or even breaking even. What a strange business model. But it is God's, and if we're to be part of the company of God and family, distributors of unconditional love, then we must get down to business and demonstrate our resemblance to our creator. End of quote. Michael J. Simone, Jesuit, writes about our gospel reading, saying that they are some of Jesus' most challenging and difficult teachings. And Jesus expected his disciples to pattern their lives after the things that God had taught him the Father's gift of the eternal love. At every moment in his life, Jesus knew the Father's love, followed the Father's command to love, and sought to fulfill the Father's dream of a world built on love. Secondly, he studied the Father's ways in the history of Israel. Although the people of Israel strayed from the covenant again and again, the Father sought them out and forgave them. Scripture even records that God took Israel back when it did not seem sensible. A final lesson came from nature. The sun rises both on sinners and saints. God's reign falls equally on the righteous and the wicked. Simone concludes, living the gospel makes us like the Father. But this is what it means to be a child of God. There is no hubris in finding the loving things to do in any given situation, or forgiving those who wrong us, sharing our gifts even with those who do not deserve them. God is always ready to love, give, and forgive. Just so, those who call themselves children of God must follow God's example in all these ways. Karl Barth, a great um, conservative theologian of the first part of the 20th century said, man can never wrest love only unto themselves and make it their own possession. They can only continually receive it afresh as something shed abroad from above. Such love, which is God's work, is possible only because he first loved us. Therefore, we need close contact with God, not only to discern the truth, however faultingly, but also God's continual empowerment to motivate us to live the truth in new and creative ways. Let's try to imagine for a moment how this might lead us. How might peace be gained in the Russia-Ukraine situation? What do all sides want? I don't believe anybody wants a worldwide nuclear conflict. I think they know that would be bad news for everybody. How might all of us help the sides wage peace. Perhaps by listening to the Russians' concerns for their own security concerns about NATO and it and the European Union that threatened their boundaries. Is there a way we could address their concerns? 
we would probably have to reform some of our speech about anti-democratic and authoritarian regime, regimes and not simply assume that they're the bad guys and we're the good guys. Now, I'm not saying they're the good guys and we're the bad guys, but we need to try to see things from their point of view and to see it charitably. Could we then come to some adjustments concerning the pipeline and Russia's need to sell oil to benefit its economy? Could we perhaps project a project that would prevent the oil from causing devastating environmental disaster? Or perhaps Russia would like to join the European Union and NATO? These ideas may seem unworkable, or perhaps they've already been tried, but we might try again and tweak them in ways more acceptable to both sides. I've been thinking a lot about the late Archbishop Desmond Tutu, who worked so hard for peace and reconciliation in South Africa, and who was himself, as you know, a black African and very much an, a victim of apartheid as he was growing up. After the, the, the devastating war, the Truth and Reconciliation Committee that he, he chaired was a creative attempt to help former enemies become friends. Father Matthew Battle's biography of Tutu, which came out earlier, late last year, emphasizes how much his work was grounded in his view of gospel mandates for reconciliation and of his sense that God was guiding him as he undertook to help Tutus and Hootsies and Tutus learn to work together for the common good. He didn't completely succeed, but he did make South Africa a much better place. This past month, Christian Century sent a one word uh, thing asking people to write short pieces about it. And here is some, what someone wrote about the, the word enemy. He says, in 1983, I was an observer at the assembly of the World Council of Churches in Vancouver, British Columbia. One afternoon, a resolution was brought to the floor calling for an end to the practice of apartheid in South Africa. Before a vote could be taken, a diminutive man wearing a magenta clerical shirt stepped forward upon the floor microphone. Following protocol, he introduced himself. My name is Desmond Tutu. He lauded the motion and thanked the res resolutions committee for the work. Then, in a soft-spoken voice, he said, I have only one concern about this declaration. I noticed the absence of any expression of love for our white South African brothers and sisters, even those who support the existing unjust policy that's so destructive to my people and to our nation. We, of course, want change. Indeed, we must have change. But we want our oppressors to know that though we oppose their policies, we wish them no ill. Fairness and just treatment for all the people in South Africa is all that we want. And when this policy is eventually overturned, we want to work side by side with all South Africans toward peace and reconciliation in our nation. It was an electric moment. A hush fell over the assembly. We sensed the presence and power of the Holy Spirit in our midst. Bishop Tutu moved that the resolution be sent back to the committee for the inclusion of these sentiments. The motion received unanimous approval. The United States could use a much stronger sense of the common good so that all people can live together in dignity, peace, and mutual respect. T. Denise Anderson, a Presbyterian minister and coordinator for racial and intercultural justice, wrote in Christian Century two years ago, what if the preacher brought the assumption that the hearers and the preacher are the slapper, the thief, or the opportunist who takes advantage of vulnerable people. Because truth is often, because truth is often it is, sorry, because something is left out here. That, 
realization is an affront to the way we like to look at ourselves and our place in the world. We like to see ourselves as the good ones, the ones who live to make things better, until we're not. Let us stand and affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. That we may see God's presence in the lives of even the enemy, let us offer to God the needs of the whole world, saying, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Living God, you spoke to your people of old. Give to your church ears to hear your voice speaking in our day, even though those whose names, who, who those we name as enemy. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, for the nations of the world we pray, let not anger consume us. Take away from us false virtue and break down all dividing walls of hostility. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, in Jesus, you called us to sacrifice us to sacrificial love. Enable us to serve all those in need, the poor, the homeless, the sick, and the dying. Especially we pray for Richard, Jennifer, David, Bill, Geraldine, Mary Jo, Marshall, Thomas, Caitlin, Gwen, Chester, Jennifer, Mike, Rick, Kim, Trina, Jill, Caroline, John, Richard, Barbara, Adam, Nancy, Kevin, Stephanie, Dave, Dawn, Lynn, Deborah, Susan, Chuck, Bob, Martha, Annie, John, Kathleen, Andre, George, Lynn, Don, Bev, Shirley, Alice, Ilza, Samantha, Elisa, Alicia, and Yannick. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, through the hardships of the Hebrew leaders, you have preserved the life of your people. Comfort all those in distress. Make of human suffering a gracious gift to the life of others. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, in Jesus, you have given us the first fruit of your dominion. Plant your life-giving spirit in us and in our land, that we may bring forth justice and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, who formed humanity of dust of the earth, reform us into the likeness of your church, of Christ. May your mercy pour into our laps. May we see ourselves as one with those accused, and so know the joy of forgiveness given and received. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. God, 
we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Good morning. I want to welcome everyone this morning. And I think probably one of the things that you notice right off the bat is we have a new sound system. And I want to thank Charlotte Green, who just stepped outside the door. <laughs> Let's thank Charlotte Green. Now, for those of you who have wondered where our pews have gone when we have removed a pew, for example, to put rocking chairs in, they went to the attic. And those pews were retrieved from the at attic and now make up our sound box. So if you turn around and look, or if you are to look from here, that sound box looks like the original church and our pews, because in fact, it is. And uh, Charlotte made this, and it was a complete secret to all of us, and Charlotte, we are just so, so thrilled. And I want to thank all of those, uh, all of you who donated. This was an expensive endeavor to get a new sound system, but people were really committed to be able to have good sound. We, of course, want our viewers well, on our videotape to hear, but we want you who are sitting in the pews in particular to hear. And so we now have our sound system, our um, mic, not our mics, but our speakers up here working. And from what I understand, they hadn't worked for 20 years. And so people uh, at this part of the church and every part of the church will be able to hear. And Charlotte is currently our sound person. And if you have an interest in working on sound, I'm sure she would love to train you in that. So again, Charlotte, thank you very much. I want to thank all of our staff who have just been stellar. Uh, they're always stellar, whether we're meeting in person or whether we're not meeting in person, but it, it does, it is very different to be in here taping without you. And, um, and so I want to thank our music people in particular for an outstanding job and of course Carolyn and um, all of you who came in to read at, to an empty church um, because though you weren't sitting in the pews, you were very much in our hearts and I found myself sort of imagining you and I wanted to be like one of those priests and put up pictures of each of you in the pews. So thank you and thank you all for being here today and I hope that you will stay um, and join us for coffee hour. Um, in the parish hall. And if you are new to John's Memorial, just follow folks across the street for coffee hour. And we would love to welcome all of you there. Um, if you have missed a birthday blessing, I wanna invite anybody to come up for a birthday blessing today. And if you know somebody who's missed it, next month we'll take any, but all the birthday blessings that people want, I know, Sometimes parents will say to me, my child loves to come up for a birthday blessing and really misses it. So if you know a child who missed their birthday blessing next week, let's get them in, okay? Um, Ash Wednesday is coming up um, March 2nd, and uh, we will have two services at 12 and 530. And then the following Sunday, we will return to two services at 8 and 1030. 
Now, we're so excited that we can be back in here for an 8 and 1030. And we are in the process of rebuilding our infrastructure. And that means rebuilding our core of ushers and readers and acolytes and um, every aspect of the worship service where you in the past have been involved. So if you are interested in ushering or reading or acolyting, please call the office and let us know because um, it's time, it's time. And I wanna thank the Altar Guild who has consistently um, been working throughout all of this. And if you feel called to the Altar Guild, we have got a job for you. So, um, confirmation is coming up May 22nd. And so we will be doing confirmation classes. And if anybody has a desire to renew their confirmation to go through that process again or to be received into the church, please let me know as soon as possible. And we're looking at the possibility of doing a class between the 8 and 1030 service for adults. And we're still trying to arrange the appropriate time for our young people. And if you know any young people who would like to be confirmed, again, please call the office as soon as possible. If you are not currently on the e-news list, please call the office and get on the e-news list because in these coming weeks, as we increase our number of services and have going into Lent and Holy Week, you will want to follow those service times and uh, be abreast of what's going on because we are back and we're in person and we're going full hilt and really looking forward to being together as a community. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God. Oh, excuse me, the birthday blessings. Are there birthdays? Come on up. All right. How old are you? Eight. Eight years old, and I love this crown. This is wonderful. It says birthday girl. Perfect, perfect. And tell me your name. Alexis. Alexis. And um, this is a good friend of Nancy Andrews. And um, Alexis and her family have been coming for a long time. But Alexis, you have gotten so much taller since we saw you last. So we are so glad to welcome you. Um, let us pray. Oh God, our times are in your hand. Look with favor, we pray, on your servant Alexis as she begins another year. Grant that she may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen her trust in your goodness all the days of her life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Happy birthday. Yesterday was her eighth birthday. Oh, it's your birthday? Too? That's great. Well, happy birthday. And you all want to definitely be at coffee hour so you can wish them a happy birthday. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
The Great Thanksgiving will continue with Eucharistic Prayer D. Please stand. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right to glorify you, Father, and to give you thanks for you alone are God, living and true, dwelling in light inaccessible from before time and forever. Fountain of life and source of all goodness, you made all things and filled them with your blessing. You created them to rejoice in the splendor of your radiance. Countless throngs of angels stand before you to serve you night and day. And beholding the glory of your presence, they offer you unceasing praise. Joining with them and giving voice to every creature under heaven, we acclaim you and glorify your name as we say. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We acclaim you, holy Lord, glorious in power. Your mighty works reveal your wisdom and love. You formed us in your own image, giving the whole world into our care, so that in obedience to you, our creator, we might rule and serve all your creatures. When our disobedience took us far from you, you did not abandon us to the power of death. In your mercy, you came to our help, so that in seeking you, we might find you. Again and again, you called us into covenant with you, and through the prophets, you taught us to hope for salvation. Father, you love the world so much that in the fullness of time, you sent your only Son to be our Savior, incarnate by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary. He lived as one of us, yet without sin. To the poor, he proclaimed the good news of salvation. To prisoners, freedom. To the sorrowful, joy. To fulfill your purpose, he gave himself up to death and rising from the grave destroyed death and made the whole creation new. And that we might live no longer for ourselves, but for him who died and rose for us. He sent the Holy Spirit, his own first gift, for those who believe to complete his work in the world and to bring to fulfillment the sanctification of all. When the hour had come for him to be glorified, his heavenly Father, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. At supper with them, he took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Father, we now celebrate this memorial of our redemption, recalling Christ's death and his descent among the dead, proclaiming his resurrection and ascension to your right hand, awaiting his coming in glory, and offering to you from the gifts you have given us this bread and this cup. We praise you and we bless you. We praise you, we bless you, we give thanks to you. And we pray to you, Lord, our God. Lord, we pray that in your goodness and mercy, your Holy Spirit may descend upon us and upon these holy gifts, sanctifying them and showing them to be holy gifts for your holy people, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Grant that all who share this bread and cup may become one body and one spirit, a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your name. Remember, Lord, your one holy Catholic and apostolic church, redeemed by the blood of your Christ. Reveal its unity, guard its faith, and preserve it in peace. And grant that we may find our inheritance 
with all the saints who have found favor with you in ages past. We praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty God and Father, and the unity of the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Alleluia, Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Please stand. Turning to page 365, let us pray together. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. And now may the peace of God that passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. <laughs>